Today on Between the Lines, a shift in thinking that can have a profound effect on your life with entrepreneur May McCarthy. Welcome, I'm Barry Kibrick. When I first received May's book, The Path to Wealth, it was not one that I wanted on the show. After speaking with her publicist, I reconfirmed that. What changed my mind is what you'll discover, a shift in thinking that had a profound effect on my life. But I'm a writer today because I was a reader when I was 11 years old. And it was... You do, need to, need, you do not need to prove your state of happiness to anybody. Most of these speeches were as much as a month in preparation. The characters, the heroes in this book are seekers of truth in, in a story that, that involved a lot of corruption. You don't get a chance to really talk about what's real. And that is the first thing to do. May, it's a pleasure to have you here. Welcome to Between the Lines. Oh, Barry, thanks for having me. Now, May, I made the most unusual introduction ever, uh, and it was this, and, and you know it already because you know the story itself, and that was that I refused to have you on the show. And then your publicist called, and I said, nope, not having May on the show. And the reason why, and I explained it, was that I, I love the title, The Path to Wealth, because I always looked at wealth as it could be almost anything. Wealth could be spiritual wealth, it could be the wealth of love, of mm -hmm. happiness. But when I saw the seven spiritual steps to financial abundance, I said, you know, I've practiced all these things before, I've done these things, and I've never had financial abundance. So the answer is no. And your publicist then asked me, would you mind if May gives you a call. I said, if she doesn't mind not coming on the show, I don't mind her giving a call. You were very willing to know that you weren't coming on the show, and you still gave me a call. And I'll make that long story short right now by saying, I began to follow the practices in the book, and I'll still have to attest, no financial abundance as of yet, but as I said to you and to my family, by doing this every day, I have been feeling so good. So I decided, even without the financial abundance yet, to have you on to discuss even some of the issues. I'm looking at this as a free therapy session almost. <laughs> All right. So May, the bottom line is, this is a daily spiritual practice, and as you say, it's a practice that has been practiced by many religions, many things. It's not quite a meditation, and yet it's very close to it. But as you use the term, it's a practice. It is. It's, it, what I try to do here is combine tried and true goal attainment strategies. And most of us that are in business, and I've been in business for quite a long time, what we try to do is make sure that we keep our goals at the forefront of our thoughts. We have these regular planning meetings so that our companies achieve the goals that we want to have. And I decided to apply that same technique to achieving all of the kinds of goals that I wanted. Right relationships, perfect health, um, use of my skills and talents in remarkable and fulfilling and satisfying ways. And so I started this daily routine that essentially is priming my brain for success. And I combine an element of gratitude as well as this idea of spirituality in the sense that we can enable something that we can't see to help us. And that would be, most of us recognize it as intuition or maybe some subconscious messaging that shows up. But whatever you call it, we still get this intelligent messaging that shows up to help us and point us towards our goals. So that's why I wrote it. And, and that was obviously the, the part that I had a lot of trouble with because, as I said, the, the gratitude part, and we'll get really mm -hmm. deep into that because that is almost the main essence of this. Yeah. It's being grateful, being grateful what you already have. And because this is a different, as in a sense, it's a business strategy, being grateful for what you already have in your mind, have, how, explain that, because it's being grateful for something you don't have yet, but you know you're going to have. Right, it's what I call it is being grateful for what you want, but word it and think about it and see yourself in the completed goal. 
So describe it as though it's already done. And what happens there, um, do you remember the last time you bought a car? You probably um, researched cars, talked to your friends and family about cars, you, you um, started to test drive cars and you narrowed it down to maybe one or two models. Well, didn't you start to notice that car driving around everywhere on the road? You never noticed it before, but all of a sudden, because it was a goal that you had felt like you were on the verge of achieving, you really felt yourself in that car, you, your subconscious and intuition started to filter all this data and show you that car driving around on the road everywhere. It's trying to help you point out possibilities to make your goals a reality. So wording your goals as though they are already complete with gratitude is very, very important. Now, this, as I said, is geared for business, and that's why I found it different, because mm -hmm. it was. But it, as I said, it's helping me mm -hmm. by just doing the practice feel, I don't know how to say this, calmer mm -hmm. about myself, more at peace within myself. But I'm also a very goal attainment person. Yes, you are. And I'm curious, though, about a person who may not be goal attainment, but wants to achieve the same feeling, yet where does that financial abundance then come in for the, maybe the sanitation worker or the other person? How do they benefit and what is financial abundance? How do you define it almost? Well, financial abundance is different for everybody, right? And for, you brought up a sanitation worker, perhaps the sanitation worker's goal is to be using his or her talents in remarkable and fulfilling and satisfying ways and working for a company that they feel really supported and who they, uh, with people who they absolutely love working with and that they are prospered and they are paid well. So they can start writing out, I'm so grateful that I am now and all of those qualities of the perfect job. And it may be that because they're feeling this joy and they're really feeling like they're prospering and they're doing well and they're using their skills and talents, what will happen, I think, is that they're going to notice more possibilities maybe for a promotion, maybe for a different job. Maybe they run into somebody who knows someone else that's hiring for a different position. This is the way the practice works, but you have to make it real first. I mean. Most professionals um, that are really, really good at sports, at um, business, at music, what they'll say is that they see themselves in the completed goal. They see themselves winning the match. They see themselves making the sale. They see themselves on stage performing. And they see that first. And once that belief really anchors in, that's when they start to notice possibilities to make those statements true. Well, that's the weird. And as I said, I've been doing this mm -hmm. practice now for about 90 days, I think it is. Mm -hmm. and, and as I said, I haven't achieved financial abundance, which you don't put a time limit on this, so it's, I'm, not, I'm not going after that. But there is this element that, how can I describe it? it in fact, I actually told you about it. Is it, it somewhat made me almost feel fraudulent. Mm, yes. And I said, you know, I'm thanking, for things that haven't happened. And you even have a term for it. You even called it the fraud factor. Yes. So explain that because it still is a hard leap for me to, to, to make. Mm -hmm. Well, what happens is when we start talking about something that's outside of our comfort zone, uh, maybe it's a bigger financial goal than you've ever had, maybe it's a bigger um, work type of goal than you've ever had, or even a health goal than you've ever had. When you're writing out that completed goal, you can feel a little fraudulent. And that's one of the reasons is because your brain wants to protect you from disappointment and to keep you safe. And so what ends up happening is you have this feeling like, oh my gosh, that's impossible because I can't think. Rationally, I can't think of how that's going to be possible. And I'll be honest with you, intuition and your subconscious are not rational. They're going to show up once you notice that it possibly could happen. So writing it out every day, seeing yourself in your mind's eye in the completed goal, what that ends up doing is help to train your brain to believe that 
you are in fact serious about achieving that goal and being in that new position that you're seeing in your mind's eye, that you're writing about every day, that you're feeling emotional about every day. And what ends up happening is once that belief, that neural pathway of belief is really anchored, that's when your brain says, okay, I'm gonna get out of the way and I'm gonna show you some possibilities. All right, I'm gonna grill down a little further yeah. though with your own question. Sure. What do you do when you're using the steps, mm -hmm. practicing every day, eliminating fear and doubt, and still nothing is happening? Mm -hmm. Because that's going to, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. telling you, uh, you know that I've experienced that myself, and I was frustrated. In fact, there's a part of me that got more frustrated than I would normally get, because here I was doing this, mm -hmm. and nothing was happening. Well... It, it's your I, question. I, I didn't right. bring that up. So there are a number of things that could be blocking. Um, I teach workshops all over the place and get a chance to meet people from all walks of lives. And some of the comments that I've heard, um, they'll have these pre-recorded beliefs in their brain that they learned from a very young age. Some things that you can do is write out these denials of these lies. The one thing I've noticed with this that's not contradictory is mm -hmm. that when I do this, I do feel ease and joy. And you actually even say that at times, it may feel that you're, you're doing even less and achieving more. Mm -hmm. And I've been experiencing that as well. But, and, and, and this is kind of a, a hard for me to even express is that I, I feel this, this peace and calm, and that I'm not going to give up on. So no matter what, as I said, whether financial abundance comes or not, that's, that's sticking with me. And, and the doing less is working, and the enjoyment is working. And I even see some of these connections. I see some of the elimination of old behaviors. There's a number of things that are, 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 are working, and yet, blockage still exists mm -hmm. and it's and I know you say you have to be very careful about the words themselves mm -hmm. you do have to and um, it, just since we're having a conversation uh, one thing I've heard you say a couple of times is well financial abundance hasn't come yet almost as though there's still a doubt that it will so you have to eliminate that doubt, first of all. Financial abundance is yours, and being really clear about what you want. That would, that would be my advice in regards to that. The other thing is that fears and doubts can essentially consume us. I mean, think about the last time that you were really angry about something. Could anyone come up to you and have a conversation with you? Probably not. If you're really angry or worried or fearful or, or maybe even have unforgiveness towards someone else, what ends up happening is that becomes so all-consuming that you don't have any room within you to receive the good things that you want. But the other thing is you don't have a awareness of intuition and in your subconscious trying to give you messaging because you're, you're all consumed with, with fears and doubts and and, um, and uh, unforgiveness or judgments or worry, those kinds of emotions. Well, we have know, to eliminate those first. Well, I, 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 I know as you're saying it, I did hear myself now talking that way, so I stop have to it. be careful, I have to stop <laughs> that. The thing that caught me though, that I really did find different than many paths of this sort of ilk, is that you don't believe that if you just do this, this is going to happen. You believe in what's called action faith, and you really want us to fully recognize that if we don't take action necessary to still receive the good we want, no matter how much you do this, nothing's going to happen. So you're not just this quote unquote, just do this and you're going to experience it. You really believe that action is still required. It's not like you don't go to work and you just think you're going to become financially abundant. It's that you still do all the things. And in fact, what you say is by doing the practice, like you said, you might get some hunches 
some yeah. insights, some things that really may make this thing happen more. So it's a form of action, not just thought. Right, what, what it's probably a good thing to note is that I, I describe this as a business partnership or a life partnership. And I'm partnering with my source of intuition. Okay, I have intuition that I can get as gut instincts, feelings in my heart, maybe a thought that I just comes in out of the blue, uh, or maybe it's a message through someone else. So I have an opportunity to partner with that. And there are clear roles and responsibilities in this partnership, just the same way that there are clear roles and responsibilities in my business partnerships. So uh, my job is to figure out what it is that I want and be grateful that I have it in my life. My partner's job is to create the path now to get there. I don't get to do that anymore. And give me one step to take at a time. It is that gratitude. Mm -hmm. For whatever reason, as I, I told my wife, I said, you know the one thing I haven't felt before doing this is I felt happiness all the time. I'm not a depressed mm -hmm. person most of the time. I mean, almost all the time I'm mm -hmm. not but I was beginning to feel an internal joy, yeah. Yeah. a sense of, hey, why wasn't I feeling this way before? And I spoke to you about that and you said celebrate. Absolutely. And throughout the book, that's one thing that you feel is very important as well as being grateful, is celebrate every moment that you make those awarenesses, that you make that extra hunch, that you see that door that was closed now open, yeah. celebrate those moments. The importance of celebration, I want you to get into because that could also sound a bit strange when you're <laughs> celebrating something small, but you really say even the smallest thing, celebrate it. Well, celebrating, first of all, it's fun. It's just yeah. really fun. But also it's, again, telling your brain that this practice is working. You're celebrating the fact that you got an intuitive lead and you took a step, all right? You may not reach your goal yet, but it's kind of like the birds before land. Something happened that may, gave you some proof that this partnership is working, that, that your intuition does want to help you achieve your goals, right? So celebrating is essentially reinforcing that this is working and it develops positive expectations uh, which much, much brain research has been done on this. In fact, some of the best is out of Cambridge University. And they prove that when you have positive expectations and positive emotions, you're lighting up this front part of your brain. And that has been proven to enable us to focus and see more possibilities more clearly. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to use this practice to enable your subconscious and your intuition to point you towards achieving your goals. So celebrating is, there's so many benefits, plus it's just fun. You say this, there will always be distressing situations in life that we can't control. Mm -hmm. But if we're prepared, we don't have to experience debilitating distress. Mm -hmm. I, as soon as I did read that, I corrected myself, mm -hmm. by the way. Mm -hmm. But I had to be made aware of that. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what part of the practice is. Well, it sets a foundation. And because you're doing the practice and you're having these signs and these intuitive leads that are guiding you and directing you, I mean, your big, hairy, audacious goals are gonna take a little longer to achieve, you know, simply because you, know, you may have been filled with some doubt in order to achieve that. But some of the smaller ones, like health and joy and, and uh, harmonious relationships and things like that can be more obvious that in fact you are achieving those goals and it's wonderful. So that proof, that experience of always knowing that you can achieve what it is that you want helps you to remain calm when something big happens. And boy, I've had some real biggies from, from cancer diagnosis to being sued by multiple Fortune 20 companies. I mean, some really big ones that are very scary. If I do the practice every day, my foundation is there, and I don't, I don't get scared for as long a period of time. I know that all I have to do is describe what it is that I want for the outcome. Well, I always, I even tell my son this, and I tell my viewers this, I say it's not so much 
you know, it, it's really the goal in life is to just shorten those gaps yeah. of feeling bad and, 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 and not get, let them go this way. And the key to that, one of the things you point out, and I want to read it exactly, is forgiveness. Because forgiveness, we, we sometimes, the way you describe it, I think makes so much sense. It takes away all that part, well, I can't forgive him for doing that, or I can't, because you're not forgiving the other person so much or the other thing. What you say is forgiveness means that you can recognize they did something wrong, mm -hmm. but you can also choose to not let them or the situation have power over you anymore. So when you say forgiveness, you're not necessarily saying, you're not apologizing, you're not doing that, but you're not letting the situation or the individual have power over you anymore. That's a major step when it comes to moving forth. Well, this is, again, this is a goal attainment strategy. So all I care about is the person that wants to achieve their goals. Now, forgiveness is, or what I call the giving forth process. If you're filled up to the brim, you have no room to receive anything more. This is not condoning anyone else's behavior. What this is is a goal attainment practice. So we move this out of us. We put it over here on the side. Now you may feel an intuitive lead to take action, which means, you know, get some professional help, get some spiritual guidance, get some some means of really removing that forever from your life. But in the forgiveness or giving forth part of my practice that I write about, we're just taking it out, putting it here so that you have room to receive the good things that you want. And this is a mantra of my own actually, but you wrote it, so I'm gonna use your <laughs> words. Sometimes the person we most need to forgive is ourselves. Absolutely. And that's, for you know, I, I say this a few times, for good people, that's the hardest thing. Mm -hmm. For good people, for, forgiving someone who's bad or done something wrong, they're good people, that's easy. Mm -hmm. But forgiving yourself, more important than any mm -hmm. other forgiveness. Well, that's why in that giving forth um, you know, paragraph that I ask people to read every single night out loud, every single night before going to sleep, they're to read that out loud. There's one part in there that says, and if there's anyone to forgive, including myself, you know, any, if anyone needs to forgive me, including myself, they now do so and we are free. Ah, see, that's, it's all about setting everything free so you have room for the abundance. <laughs> to receive all of your <laughs> to good. To receive all of the good. Yeah. One more thing, before, I know we're, very, we're already over time. I'm going to cut something else out later because <laughs> there's just too much grist for the mill here. Grace. Mm -hmm. That is a word I love so much and seldom here. And I have to say that again, because I've been criticizing the things that haven't happened, so I have to keep praising the things that have happened, I have been feeling more grace. Yeah. And by that, even uh, a sense of even how I walk, mm -hmm. how I, oh, I, I love you you, 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 you know, that's what I love about you, May, <laughs> is you feel so good about other people's good things. That, that in itself, if I could, <laughs> I need a little bit more of that as well. So I'm putting that in the practice tonight. But it, it, it's really true. Grace is, is almost missing. And yet I believe like you, it's all out there, but we need to channel that more. Well, you know, the nice thing about the way that um, grace in imperfect ways is used in this practice is that when you're describing what it is that you want, um, you can add the term with grace and imperfect ways to essentially enable a better outcome to show up. So you're, you're grateful for what you want as though you've already achieved it when you're writing and you're speaking it out loud and you're imagining having it. But when you write it and speak it out loud, if you add on there with grace and in a perfect way, sometimes, in fact, often for me, I get something even better than I ever wanted. Well, as obvious as it seems, as I told you, we did run out of time, so I have <laughs> to end now, May, although I, I, I just, as I was telling my family, just love talking to you. It's mm -hmm. just that simple. I, and for that in itself, I'm so grateful that you 
have come on the show, and I'm going to end with these words. We are all free to experience a higher and greater good in our lives, and thank you, May, for reminding us what matters most. Thank you. It's my pleasure, and thank you all for joining us. Now, before May leaves, I'd like to leave you with these few more words from The Path to Wealth. End your day with gratitude and forgiveness. Forgive any situation, any person, and yourself for anything that needs to be forgiven in the past or present. Be grateful for all the good you have and will receive in your life. I'm Barry Kibrick. There are many things in our universe that exist between doubt, reality, hope, and faith. The one certainty is this, be grateful and you can't help but feel better about it all. Thank you, May. Thank you, Barry. My pleasure. Closed captioning for Between the Lines with Barry Kibrick is made possible by your generous contributions to KLCS Education Foundation. Thank you for your support. To connect with Barry, like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at Barry Kibrick. And to contact Barry directly, watch past episodes of Between the Lines, and read his blog, visit us at barrykibrick.com. <laughs>